Welcome to the Power Half Hour, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us 11 o'clock midday to, you know, find out about all these top producers, what they're doing that's having them work, um, having them, you know, have the quantum lead that they're, they're having. And today we have a very special guest, um, Jack Sai. Uh, we are not related, at least not that I know of, or he's not my son either, at least not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, um, every, again, I'll say this, everybody loves you. you you're doing such, such great things out in the community, contributing to other agents' lives and just being out there as a great person. And thank you for taking the time today, Jack. Welcome. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So do tell us a little bit about yourself. I know, I, I think the, the LA group knows a lot about you, but I don't know if they know exactly uh, what your upbringing is and what you went through. Sure. So can you tell us about your upbringing? Sure. Uh, so I was born in Taiwan. I came over to the state when I was 13. And I would say in terms of uh, real estate or in terms of financial knowledge, I started reading books when I was in college. And uh, I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book really inspired me to you know, get into real estate. So uh, since I graduated, um, I started working with my family for a little bit, for about like two, three years. And part-time, and I was, I got my license doing, being a realtor as a part-time agent. I think I sold like three home the first year, five home the second year. Mm. And uh, cause I, I really didn't really need that money. But about two years after I, I graduated, my parents decided to leave to Taiwan. So I had to make a decision whether I'm gonna stay here, continue being a realtor, or I'm gonna go back to Taiwan and to work for someone or find something to do. But I just know that I've always wanted to like make a lot of money. I don't want to, because I, I think the, the book really influenced me a lot. Like I, I know that working for someone, having a W-2 income, you're kind of capped right, at, your, at how much you can make. And you have to always look at your boss and you know, take, you know, just take, take that you know, um, like frustration you know, working for someone. So that time uh, I, I wanted to make about 50, I decided to stay. And I wanted to make, my goal was to make 50 grand a year uh, at age like 24 or something. And um, I remember back then I went to a Mike Ferry training. My office kind of promoted that, gave us like free tickets. And then when I was there, remember, I just want to make 50 grand. But I right. saw agents like John Sai. I saw agents like Simone, Pablo, Michael. They are like, oh, I'm, I'm, they're making half a million dollar a year, $800,000 a year, a million Two million, three million. I was like, "Holy, you can make that much money being a realtor." So I remember, I remember back then, I was like, "You know what? If I can make one tenth of what they're making, I'll be happy." And then now, like thinking today, I'm like, "I should make a higher goal because I, I'm that happened, right?" So really, whatever your mind can believe, it, it's it, it's gonna you can achieve it, right? So uh, in the beginning, it wasn't really easy. I mean, I I, I had to learn how to take listings. And I was dealing with like learning to prospect, cold call, door knock. I have a lot of self doubt. Like mm -hmm. I, my my inner inner chatter, my analytical mind kept on telling me, "Hey, you're too young. You're not good enough. You don't know how to do this." So other people know other other agents too. Why should they hire you? And I have like colleagues or friends, acquaintances. They are also realtors, and I will compare myself with them. Mm -hmm. And like, oh yeah, we're at the same age. Oh, they're younger, but they are doing so many more deals than me, right? And, uh, but I was able to do about 15 to 18 deals a couple of years in, so I was oh, wow. grinding a lot. I was calling 20, 50, 100 people a day, spending like eight, 10 hours, oh, five to eight hour calling. And like, usually every day I work for like 12 to 14 hours a day, kind of like you, John. And I would work six to seven days a week. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. There's no freedom in that, right? No, not at all. Yeah. And I remember like back in 2013, I had like a really tough time. So I had a, my family got into a family lawsuit. Mm. And I remember my parents weren't here. So I was dragged into the lawsuit. Ah. And because of that, I had to file a bankruptcy at age like 27 or something. Wow. I had no credit card. I had to transfer fund from one bank to another bank to pay for my payments for car, for house, stuff like that. And 
so I, I also experienced like a, my, a divorce back then, the same year. Wow. I, I got into a car accident because I got drunk that day when I found out I'm getting a divorce. And then I got into a car accident and I broke my leg Whoa. all in the same two, three months period. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I was very fortunate because that was the time I met my, my wife now. And so I, I'm very, very appreciative of her. Of course. I, I know that she's definitely not in for the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's no, just not in for this. <laughs> oh, man. That's true. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. I think you know, the, the audience wants to know, right, as well as myself, People go through hardship and people go through tough times and you've had such a you know, tough time in such a short period of time. It either breaks you or it makes you. I think it made you. But tell us a little bit about that thought process during that time. What, we, what was going through your mind when you're going through such a hard time? I think initially it's like, uh, why, am I, why am I dealing with this? Uh, why is this happening to me? But yeah, I think, I think going, because I'm very fortunate when I first started my career, I started to get into personal development mm. and I, I read, right? So from those, I learned that, you know, like I was able to bounce back pretty quickly and I was fortunate, like I was able to have, I had master my group like this. I had my ex-colleague, my good friend, they're there to support me. And I'm, I'm generally a pretty like happy, positive person. And, but I used to drink a lot. You still do. I still do. You still do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I kind of I think I would just like I would just be like you know what I got things that I want to accomplish, right? And I got go, by I, ha- I got dream boards. I got things I want to buy, experience I want to have, uh, and I really I'm only I was only like twenty something. I'm like life's still long, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll get over it. Yeah, is that is that what made you me- so mentally tough? Because I've seen a lot of people uh, in real estate get burned and then they don't, they don't recover. Well, they, they do recover, but it t- takes them a long time. You seem to like get burned and then just bounce back. You get burned and then you bounce back, right? So is that, is that why it made you so, so tough so quickly? I think um, that time I remember very vividly, vividly that because I got bills to pay, like, ah. like the, 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 the lawsuit, I gotta, I gotta pay 200 grand. So I remember every day I was just like, okay, I gotta make money. I gotta have escrows. Wait, so I you gotta, have $200,000 in debt? Jack? Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. And I, I was like 26. Had. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, I gotta, I was every day I was just thinking, well, how can I get more deal? How, where can I find more client? How can I improve my service? I remember back then, like I would stay at the office till sometime one or two o'clock. On the weekends, like on Friday. So I'm like, when I go home, I got nothing to do anyways. Might as well work. Wow. It's not healthy. You don't have to do that. But just back then, that was what I did. Yeah, man. Um, I, uh, James James Humber, just give me, gonna give you a shout out. We had a great conversation before this. And uh, he asked me how I, I was able to achieve my goals. And uh, I'm like, let's let's talk about why, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and back then, Jack, you had a big why, right? And that drove you to work seven, six, seven days a week, stay at the office one to two, uh, one to two in the morning, right? And that was your why. You had something at stake. So now, Jack, I mean, you paid that off, right? The debt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What drives you forward today? I think um, because in my 12th year of career, uh, I was able to meet a lot of great people, like like yourself, like like all, all the people in our LA group or like in Vancouver, and also just people that I met in Mike Ferry and like Amy's training, coaching. That's just I was able to meet a lot of top producers, who is able to who makes like a million, two, three, four, five million, or even half a million dollar in passive income every year. So when I see that, I'm like, hey, if they can do it, I can do it too. Mm. Okay, I, I mean, I may not even need to get to their level, but if I can get there halfway, I'm there, you know. So I think being pro- like what we talk about all the time, proximity is power. Mm-hmm. So always have exposure to to see those things, to mm-hmm. experience those things, and to talk to those people. And you'll know those people usually they they want to help you. 
Yeah. Yeah. So really think about this, guys. Who are you hanging out with right now? Are they bringing you up or are they dragging you down? Jack reaches up to people who are doing a lot more than him. And he's very humble about it. If I can just have half of what they do or even one tenth of what they do, I'd be happy. Now, how do you, you see, because a lot of us, um, myself included, I compare. Usually it's not the conversation of if they can do it, I can do it. It's man, they're doing that and I'm not doing it. And I am not enough. They have these things that they tell themselves. Did you ever deal with that? Or were you always in that positive mindset of they can do it, I could do it? Um, I used I used to deal with that a lot. Even since uh, I it started to get better about since two years ago, since we started to work together. Because before, I had, as I mentioned, a lot of self-doubt. And I will compare. There will be like some realtors in the area that's that doing way more. And you know, we'll see them on social media, right? Right. I will, I will unfollow the post because oh, I don't want to wow. see it. Yeah, when I see it, I'm like, why is he or she doing so well? Why, why is it not me? But since two years ago, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time, right? And you, you, you asked me to take a lot of different classes and we would just have chat, especially when I have a lot of inner chatter. I, it's really back to focusing on who we're being. Mm. And it, it's not about other people. It's not about caring about how, what other people think. Like it, it's their life, you know, good for them. But I got my life back at a lift. And, and at the end of the day, it's a marathon. Uh, it, it's not a sprint. And, and I, I'm not saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to beat them. I have to win them by a lot. Like, we all can win. There's enough pie for everyone. I think really shifting from the scarcity mindset to abundance mindset help a lot. You know, like all this, like if we can, for most of us, it does say in California, because I don't know where everyone's coming from. If we can sell 20, 30, 40 homes, we make pretty good income, right? Like, like good income, even in California. And that means in one year, we just need to find 20, 30, 40 people to work with. And there are thousands of homes being sold every single month. Right. So it's just about fo being focused, like focus on your work, focus on what you want, and then just Let's help other people. That's phenomenal. Where, where did you learn all that um, to switch yourself from scarcity mindset to abundance mindset? Uh, you. <laughs> oh, me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You, you also, I, I took quite a lot of different personal development classes, right? So I want to give a shout out to Amy, Amy Lin. Uh, she helped me to think in quantum leap. Mm. Uh, she's one of the Bob Proctor's uh, senior instructor. And Dach Nguyen. Uh, like he, he, he also mentioned to me, you know, focus on who you're being. Amy also mentioned about this, like who you're being is how you're feeling. So you got to feel abundance, do your gratitude, do your meditation, visualization. And um, yeah, and I think you helped me out the most. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words and Amy. And thank you. We can't, cannot thank you enough um, for what you've uh, contributed to our group. So Jack, some people, uh, you know, a lot of agents on this call, I bet you don't know, you know, the concept of doing versus being and grinding versus aligning. Let's touch a little bit about that. I think you can explain that better than I do though. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would say uh, when I first started, first, first 10 years, I was grinding a lot. Mm. Like all I was focusing on was like, okay, I need to talk to 20 people a day. If I don't get an appointment, I need to talk to more. And I got to just keep on always do more, do more, do more. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from my childhood too, right? I always feel like I'm not doing enough. Mm. But uh, since two years ago, we started working together. You and Amy and Dax were telling me, you know what? You're doing too much. Mm. Focus on who you're being instead of what you're doing or doing more, right? So my take on that is that, I mean, you guys always tell me this, like think about who you want to become in the future. Let's say three to five, 10, 20 years down the road. Uh, how would that person look like or mm. be like? And there's a book, uh, the book called Max Out. I forgot the name of the author, um, but he mentioned that he, he had a vision of who he's, who is gonna, who, who he's gonna be who is going to be, who he, who he's going to be remembered as when he passed away mm. in, um, yeah, in Malay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He says Thank that he, every day he think about that person in heaven so that when he die, 
he can go to the heavens, be like, hey, I look exactly like you. Wow. So, so uh, who you're being, you just got to think of like who you want to become in the future and then take action as if you're already that person. Uh, so one thing, one thing that I did in the past two years is that whenever I have a situation, I'm like, oh, sh- what should I do? I, I think that I would be like kind of just confused about. I, w- I would really think, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to flatter you or whatever. But uh, I would think, hey, what would John do? Wow. And sometimes if I don't know, I would just call you. Hey, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and guys, you know, who are you surrounding yourself with? And who's going to pull you up when, when you're having a bad day? And you know what? Success is not what you do. Success is about who you're being. So really look at yourself, you know, in your mind's eye, five years from now, who do you want to be? Right? And 10 years from now, who do you want to be? Visualize that person. And how would you feel if you already were, are that person? Right? So that, that's a great thought. That's a great thought, Jack. Now, your production, Jack, let's talk about that. You're going from 50 tra- 15 transactions a year to 30 transactions last year, and you're going to 45 this year. And you've attracted a great group of agents of over 100 people. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Now, besides the why, which you talked about, with your upbringing and why you're so mentally tough, how did you do all that? It kind of come back to what I just talked about, and but to kind of put it together, I would say when I first came over uh, to to EXP to work with you, I was doing like 15, 18 deals a year, right? And but when I first came, I was like, okay, uh, EXP's got its own opportunities, stock and revenue share, but let's not worry about that first. Let's mm. focus on this. The main reason why I came was because you mentioned to me that you guys got a mastermind group. With you, Steve Marriott, Michael Ireland, Simone, Pablo, and Denise, and all these top producers. I was like, okay, if I were to come, not, not leveraging any of those benefit, just by being with you guys, I can learn. Because I remember three, four, five years ago, I asked you when we were prospecting school, I don't know if you remember, um, we, were, we were at my career prospecting school. I was like, hey, John, I wanna learn from your mastermind group. Can I be in? And then you're like, oh, it's full. And I'm like, okay, it's cool. And you said the minimum requirements that you're going to make $300,000 a year. Ooh. I was like, okay, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm like, if I make $300,000, what would I want to join? <laughs> I was making like $150 or something, right? But, but that gave me a desire because I know how powerful and strong your mastermind group is. It's like, if I want to play basketball, if I can go join uh, like, like LeBron, Kobe's like training camp, I'll grow, I'll learn by just by being there asking questions, right? So when you said that when if I come to EXP, I can join your mastermind group, I'm like, okay, I'm in. I don't even care about other stuff, right? Wow. And after I came, I was like, okay, since I have this resource, who do I need to become? I want to be a great leader. I want to be able to not only run a successful real estate business uh, by selling more homes, at the same time, I want to be able to transfer what I know to the agent that I brought in. Ah. I want to be able to speak, present, so that people want, to, people want to work with me. So I think that's one big thing. And then, so when I first came, you were like, you know what, you need to hire people. You need to delegate. So like pretty much like one or two months after I joined, I told my wife, hey, you know what, work, quit your job, come work with me. Mm. And I, 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 Amy mentioned yesterday too, it's about automation, ditch and delegate. So create system so that I told my wife all the time too, hey, we got to think that we're running a, a million dollar business. And then my ultimate goal with her is not that me and her will be tied in in this business. We can't go anywhere. My ultimate goal with her is that, you know what, why don't you work for me first so you can learn? And then that way we can hire someone else to take your spot. Mm. And then we can build a team to, to help with the team and I can take my slot. So we can eventually free our time and have time freedom. That's so, awesome. yeah, so since there, that's where I started asking, hey, how do I build a team? And you helped me out a lot. You had Renee help me out as well. And I started asking Amy about how do I, you know, just get out of my comfort zone, you know, take action as if I'm already that person in the future. Yeah, that's 
Absolutely. Grow into that, that image of yourself, you know, who you're going to be five to 10 years from now. Can you repeat that once again, Jack, what Amy said to you? Ditch and yeah. delegate and what? Is the ADD? Automate? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ditch and delegate. What's the A? So automate, like basically automate. systemize. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So automate, ditch, and delegate. Correct. What are you ditching these days to move yourself faster? So I talked to Amy before I joined her coaching program. Like, hey, Amy, I'm doing a lot already. I don't have time. My schedule is packed, right? Like, usually I would get up early. I would finish, like, every single day, even since, like, last December. And then I'm like, okay, I'll show you my schedule. You let me know where I can fit in your coaching class. Ah. And, then, and then she saw it. She said, hey, Jack, your schedule is too packed. Oh. You're not allowing opportunities to come in. And wow. I was thinking... It's true. You know, if I'm always busy running around like a headless chicken, how would I be able to sit down and really think and then oh, do the wow. do the income generating activity instead of like trying to make everything happen by myself? That's that's a that's a game changer right there. Yeah. If you if you have a schedule that's too full, guys, how will you allow space for opportunities to come to you? You know, I just read something on Instagram. John D. Rockef Rockefeller, he said, people who work too hard don't have enough time to make money. Isn't that crazy? So it really is, if you're in business, automate your business, ditch what's unimportant or delegate it if it is important then you can have the time freedom you and your wife want, right? Yeah. And congratulations again. Um, if people don't know, you're, you're expecting a child. So thank you, thank you. that's big. That's big. I still, I got a lot of questions to ask you guys about having a kid too. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the thick of it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to know this from you as well. Jack, I think who you've become as a person is just on a whole other level. I also think it's because you were contributing to others. You were coaching others. You're mentoring others, which automatically brings you up to that. Do you think that has an impact on you? I think so. I think since I decided to be a leader, uh, first thing I was doing is like, okay, I got to learn how to present. Like, just let's say, for example, the EXP model. Mm -hmm. so when I look at that I'm like okay I cannot just read word by word I have to really understand it so when people ask me a question I can explain it so so that's when I started to observe other speakers like yourself like Amy like Thatch like other Tony Robbins like how do they ask questions how do they how do they speak where do they look so so people want to follow them mm -hmm. and you had to I had to really understand so I can I can share and people understand. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. How, how, have you been always so curious? Uh, you just have this like thirst for knowledge and you're not afraid to reach out to people uh, to learn and pick their brain, right? Is that a skill that you developed or did it come naturally to you? I think one thing that I'm pretty good at, I, I'm an expressive. Ah, okay. Right? Make so, sense. so, but one thing that I'm good at is to learn not to care so much ah. and, and, and like really like, I think of this, like, for instance, if we're a realtor, right? I mean, most of us are realtor here, like we got to talk to our database or talk to expired, so whatever you want to do, or in this situation that you just talked about asking someone who's doing better, like it's, it's that if you ask, you have a chance, mm. you don't ask. You don't have a chance. And if you don't ask, you're going to be in the same spot. Mm. If you ask, you may be able to learn something, right? Uh, and, and that's something that, that's going to make you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future. It could right? be if you ask. Only just like, ask. Yeah, just like, just say like, I think a lot of things is like ego risk. It's not mm. money risk. We are too afraid to look bad. Yeah, we all, we all want to look good, right, Jack? Yeah. So how, how did you get over that? Because a lot of us, you know, myself included, sometimes I'm shy to ask people what, how they do what they do. 
And you know what? And, and for myself, uh, I was in the Mike Ferry coaching program for five years before I was able to talk to, you know, people in the program. I sat in the back for five years, but you just you know, went right into it. You were never scared to ask people. How did yeah. you get that up? Uh, to be honest, I, I would, uh, I, for some reason, when you said about this, I'm like, I, but I'm not like that when I go clubbing, though. I don't go talk to girls. <laughs> but when I go to events. Your, your wife is on the call? I, I don't know, but I, I don't talk to girls and I go to clubbing anyways. <laughs> it's okay. I'm safe. <laughs> so when I go to events, I really just think that, you know, how can I be, how can I know this person on a personal level? Mm. So he or she is willing to share with me what they know. So Every event, I would make it an effort. Even though if I don't have, I'm running out of time, I will go up to say hi to someone. I will make sure, for example, Hal Swayze, mm. top producer, Mike Ferry, or, or, or Valerie Carroll, all these top producers. I will make sure I at least say hi to them once, every single time. Nice. And I would think of what question can I ask them so that can help me get to the next level. Because they, they have the answer. Right. Yeah. So guys, don't, don't be afraid to ask. You know, after this call, don't be afraid to ask Jack. Don't be afraid to ask someone who's doing a lot more than you in your marketplace or wherever else. You know, Instagram has made it so easy for us to ask questions, right? So congratulations on that. Jack, tell me, five, 10 years, 15 years, what does it look like for you? Who do you want to be by then? So in five to 10 years, you want to do five. So let's just say five. Uh, my intention is to have at least a thousand agents in my organization. So I can help them out and they, we all can, you know, sell more homes or we all can build more passive income, either from real estate, stock or, or agent attraction or whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I do believe one thing I really learned in the past couple of years is that, uh, especially from Rich Dad Poor Dad, is that if we cannot find a way to make money when we're in sleep, when we're sleeping, we're going to have to work till we die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So so this real estate income or whatever income they're having, active income. It's only a vehicle right. to help us get more passive income. So my intention is really to just work out, work with more like great influential agent or agents who want to grow to learn more about themselves, personal development uh, uh, and just all the things that we just talked about. And so we all can, you know, live a better life because there, that's, there's enough pie for everyone. Yeah, there is enough pie for everyone. If you're not taking away anything from this call, it's, it's abundance. There's enough pie out there for everyone. So do not ever be scared. There's always enough, yeah. right? So in five years, a thousand agents, and you want to help them become, you know, uh, financially free and sell yeah. real estate when they choose to, not because they have yeah. to, right? And also own like five more investment properties from leveraging Thatch's model. Ah, the Burr model. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome, man. Man, this uh, has been super inspiring. What um, maybe a couple pieces of advice to, you know, inspire us to take action to finish strong for the first quarter and make it the best second half of our lives? I would say, like what we talked about, like, you know, don't don't be afraid to take risk. Oh, like, like I mentioned, a lot of the risks that we're taking are simply ego risk, not mm -hmm. money risk. Right. Like just really think back, like, okay, by investing to hiring someone, let's say if you're doing like 10, 15 deals, a lot, I had a problem with that when I was hiring, I, I didn't want to spend or invest that money, but it's really when I take that leap of faith, trade my fear with faith, Ooh. they start to stop looking at what's the worst thing that can happen, but look at all the positive things that could happen. And, and really, once you know what you want, you, you got to know who you got to become. And then learn that skill to become that person, so you can you can you can make that happen. And that's really look at how much money you make a, a an hour, and then start delegating out. Ready, fire, aim. Ooh. Okay. The, don't wait. I mean, the timing is never right. Okay. But work with the tool that you got, and better tools will come on. That's phenomenal. So really, making it okay to fail, take the risk, guys. And, you know, before you're, you're so ready, go ahead and fire, take the actions, and then you can adjust and aim. Jack, this has been phenomenal. How do we get a hold of you? How do we send your referrals for your real estate business? And how do we uh, join your organization? Yeah, so I have, a, I have Instagram, jacksai.exprealty, Facebook, jacksai, and I have a YouTube channel, J-A-Q in the house. 
And so currently we're looking to, you know, just grow with more realtors nation, actually worldwide, basically. And uh, I would say my biggest fulfillment in the past two years is really seeing some of the agent grow mm. and then being able to double, triple, quadruple their business or for new agent, it being able to make like a hundred thousand dollar a year. For some reason, that's a lot of new agents go. That was my goal when I was newer. So if you do know anyone who's looking to grow and get a license or who need to just build a team, feel free to let us know. Awesome. Jack can help. Guys, I appreciate you all being here listening to this. Jack, this has been super inspiring. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I can't wait to, uh, you know, grow with you, man. You're, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jack. Bye -bye.